Hello, you guys. <clears throat> so I got a request for a video. I have a couple requests for videos. If I told you that I would make the video, just know that I am making the videos. I am just so swamped, but I have not uh, forgotten to make the videos that I said I would make. So I have this request. Let me go ahead and share the request with you. It's also the thumbnail for this video, but I'm going to share the request with you. And the request was, hello, Irene, can you please share your thoughts and opinions on the trailer for the new movie, The Woman King? It's about a female Dahomey warrior, and I want to know what you think of it. So this is actually a really good topic, not the movie, but the female warriors. I have mentioned female warriors in my video, Let Us Be Women, Not Warriors, um, but it was not an in-depth. I kind of just went over briefly, but I'm going to do something slightly more in-depth today. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play the trailer. Thank you. I hope your week is going good too. Mine is good, but busy. Um, I'm going to play the trailer and then we'll talk about it. How about that? So if you have not seen the trailer, I'm going to play it now. I probably will pause it to point out some things about the trailer, but in my presentation, I just want you to remember that within my presentation, I talk about the fetishization of black women being warriors. There's like a fetishization around like the strong black woman, the black woman warrior. Um, and while I was doing the research for this video, I realized that there's actually some like historical context to that, that actually ties into the transatlantic slave trade tries into Benin, ties into the Dolmi female warriors or the Amazons as the European called them. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and check out the trailer. An evil is coming that threatens our kingdom, our freedom. Okay, I just want to say, because everybody doesn't know the back history of this, I'm pausing it for copyright. <laughs> this is for commentary purposes, but I'm also uh, pausing it because I want you to really pay attention to the narrative that they're painting with this movie. The narrative is that the Domi people were fighting against the European for the liberation of Black people from the slave trade, okay? <laughs> that is the narrative in this movie. Now, spoiler alert, historically, that's an absolute lie. That's not what they were doing, but whatever. Let's just let Hollywood do its thing. But we have a weapon. They are prepared for. The weapon being black women, black female warriors. Again, I have so much to say about this, but I'm going to try to like control my urges. My king, the Europeans wish to conquer us. They will not stop until the whole of Africa is theirs. Again. I really, before I get into my presentation, I just want you to see the narrative of this movie. The idea is that the Dolmi female warriors, the Dolmi people were fighting against the European who wanted to rape and pillage Africa and take all the slaves that they could from the continent. That is the narrative of this movie with regard to the Dolmi female warriors or the Dolmi Amazonians and the Dolmi people. I just really want to, I just really want to remind you guys of that. We must fight back for our people. 
Wuhan has come. We are asking you to take them to war. war. So the woman goes to the man. I, I just really want to point this out because we're going to go into what really happened, like actual history. So the female warrior comes up to the king and says, hey, we have to fight these white people that are trying to come and take slaves. And he's hesitant to do it. This is the narrative. Things are worth fighting for. Don't know. You are called to join the king's guard. No kingdom in all of Africa shares this privilege. Train hard, fight harder. We fear no one. And we fear no pain. I offer you a choice. Fight or we die. Okay. Remember I said the fetishization of black female warriorhood. Not to mention this is grossly historically inaccurate, but I'll be doing a commentary. So let's just finish the preview. To be a warrior, you must kill your tears. Okay, so the request was, Irene, will you do a commentary on this? And I really do want to. I want to for a number of reasons. It's not just the fetishization. Like I put together a whole PowerPoint, y'all. I had to get my research on for this, which is why to the sister that asked me to do it, I did not make it right away. So first and foremost, I just want to say this. Hold on, let me make this a little bit bigger. So first and foremost, I want to say that um, there is an agenda to feminize men, masculinize women, and they're trying to get the Black community on board with this. And with the whole woman's empowerment, this and that, and you know, not to throw feminists under the bus, but new wave feminism, like this third wave of like ultra retarded feminism, this movie really speaks to the way that they want women to view themselves. And it also speaks to the ever increasing propaganda to relieve black women of femininity. It also grossly misrepresents an actually pretty disgusting part of African history. And if you are African American, or if your ancestors came from any part of the Americas that was a part of the transatlantic slave trade, the truth of the story of these female warriors, the truth of the Dahomey people is actually really disgusting. And it's nothing to be, um, it's not a, nothing to be misrepresented and fantasized about like in a movie, right? So anyway, I've titled this Dahomey Amazon's a, a Legacy of Female Leadership and Protection to be Repeated. And that is a question. So first of all, the history of the slave, the slave coast Dahomey people. Dahomey was a state of a people called the Fon, all right? This empire existed between 1625 and 1804, arguably. I'll get into more details about who might have founded it later. It was located in what is now modern-day Benin, parts of Nigeria, and Togo. Anybody who's watched an American, an African-American person do a DNA test 
knows that Benin and Togo always pretty much universally comes up in genetic testing because that's where the transatlantic slave trade was really heavy, right? That is where the slave trade was really, really heavy. So the kingdom is thought to have been founded by um, a king named Hojabaja. And Hojabaja, he founded the kingdom, they believe, in 1645. He's the one that built the royal palaces of Abomi. Now, his grandson, King Agja, inherited the throne from him. And he began to expand the kingdom. Now, I want to tell you how this kingdom was built, because I think this is really important. What he did is he started betraying other Black people. Again, this all ties into our ancestors. If you are a descendant of slaves in America, we are now talking about our ancestors, all right? How our people got to the United States, right? So our ancestors, yours and mine, um, hold on one second. Sorry, our ancestors, yours and mine, right? If you have that Benin Togo blood in you, this is how their kingdom was started, Benin specifically. Parts of Nigeria, parts of Togo. So um, his grandson, Agja, he inherited the throne and he started to expand the kingdom of the Domi. And the way that he expanded this kingdom is that he would offer his military help. So for example, the Alada, he offered his military help to them. And instead of actually helping them, once his troops were in place, he turned on them, conquered them, and took over their kingdom. And that's how the Domi kingdom spread. It was a constant process of them going to other African nations, conquering the people, and then taking over the land. And so when we talk about Fawn, the F-O-N, Fawn is a collective name for the people who were assimilated into Domi culture as they went to every single kingdom around them and violently took them their land and assimilated them into Domi, into the Domi kingdom. So it's important that we understand that the Domi people were traitors. The people who are the ancestors of those in modern day Benin, um, in parts of Togo, right? If we go back to the last slide, in parts of Nigeria, that Domi people, those people were traitors. And I think it's extremely important that we recognize that. Domi was a major supplier of slaves for the transatlantic trade. Again, I'm going to get to the female warriors of the Domi people, but I really want to establish what kind of people these were. These were people that expanded their kingdom by violating other Black people in Africa. That's why I said this, you know, uh, Sony movie that's coming out trying to portray the Domi people as these people that cared about Africa is a lie. They were some of the biggest traders in Africa. So they were a major supplier of slaves for the transatlantic slave trade, right? European nations who were a part of the, that, that slave trade, they had trading posts and factories in Domi, both for palm oil and for slaves. They were active partners with the European in the transatlantic slave trade. I just want to be really clear about this, because no matter how Hollywood tries to portray the Domi people and these female warriors, the truth, the historical truth of what went on there is actually pretty disgusting and nothing like whatever will be in that movie. So the Domi kingdom became known to European traders during that time as a major source of slaves and 
a major purveyor of slaves for the slave trade at Alada and Waida. So many slaves were collected by the Domi people that parts of what is now modern day Benin became completely depopulated, meaning they took all of the people. There were whole tribes of people who just disappeared because the Domi were collecting that many slaves. They built a military society where their entire trade was mostly around slaves and palm oil. So in 1818, King Giso, who is featured right here, he came to the throne because they were not even loyal to each other. Now, I really want you to think about how Black people who are descendants of slaves in America act right now, because these people are likely your ancestors, okay? If you have Benin, Togo, right, Nigerian blood in you, and you are a descendant of slaves in America, these are the people who's not, whose blood not only runs through your veins, but who are responsible for you getting here, your ancestors coming here. So in 1818, King Giso, he came to the throne by forcing his older brother out of power. He linked up with a, now listen to what I'm saying. He forced his own brother out of power, which is no surprise because they were already they were already engaging in slavery, right? Selling slaves to Europeans. They were already conquering other African nations, taking them over, selling their people into slavery. So it's no surprise that he got together with a Brazilian slave trader named Francisco de Salsa to help him throw his brother out of power so he could take over the kingdom. And in exchange for his help overthrowing his brother, he agreed to give this Brazilian slave trader the, sta the status of viceroy in one of their slave trading ports. It was this king, even though the Amazons, right, or the Dahomey, female warriors had already existed, it was that king, King Gizo, who formally made them a part of the military to fight on the front lines. I want to put some things in perspective when we talk about this topic. The female contingent of their army was basically made up of the king's wives. Let me see if I can enlarge this. Oh, I enlarged it too much. The female contingent of the Dahomey army was made up of the king's wives. Even though they weren't literally his wives, many of them were virgins, right? The Europeans called them Amazons, naming them after uh, historical mythical figures in European, I believe it was Greek, mythology. These female warriors were originally designed to be the bodyguards of the king. So the king was bodyguarded by women. Some people thought that they were also elephant hunters, but there's no evidence that that's necessarily the case. In the modern day, you hear them often referred to as Mino or what is supposed to mean our mother but when I looked up what African scholars were saying, they said that the, the term actually means witch and is actually not appropriate to use for them, even though it's being commonly used and misinterpreted as our mother. Now, how did women get into this warrior class of women for the Dahomey people? There were some women who volunteered. But many of the women were involuntarily forced to be a part of this army, right? This regiment of the Mahoney. And I want to be clear that um, all of their, I want to be clear that all of the Dahomey women, all of the Dahomey army was not, was not women. 
It was just a small regiment in the army, right? Or in their military. So if a woman was aggressive, if she had negative character traits and the husband of that woman or their father complained that a woman was being aggressive and had some negative character traits, they would force her to be a part of the Dahomey female warrior class. And the idea was that they could take her aggressive behavior and they could hone that aggression for war. The women were not allowed to have children. They were not allowed to marry because technically, legally, they were married to the king because, you know, they were supposed to be his bodyguards. And many of them were virgins, like I said earlier. They were taught, check this out, to survive. <laughs> they were taught to survive. And they were taught to be indifferent to pain or death. I want to stop right here and ask you, does this remind you of the American Black woman? Right? Being uh, coined as aggressive, this strong woman, this warrior class of woman, the fighter. Isn't that the picture of Black women that is painted in the United States? Do you think it's any coincidence that the way most of our ancestors ended up here was through traitorous behavior from these people, the Dahomey people, and that within that culture, women who were aggressive were forced into a uh, Dahomey, you know, female warriorship. That these women were taught that they should not care about pain. They shouldn't be worried about dying. They shouldn't want to have children. They shouldn't get married. Right? They had, they, they had amazing survival skills. They protected men. They did not, they were not protected by men. Do you think it is any surprise that some of that is still deeply ingrained in our culture in America when the very people who captured so many slaves and sold them to the European, the very people that conspired with the Europeans to sell black bodies to the transatlantic safe trade for slavery had this deeply ingrained and I just want to be clear that Hollywood is now making a movie trying to make this sound like it was a good thing. And these women were amazing warriors who were fighting against slavery when the reality is, and we'll get into this, these women fought battles to keep the Dahomey people capable of selling slaves. And they did this at the behest and command of their king. That is the truth of the Dahomey people and these female warriors. These women were forced, many of them, to be a part of the warrior class. They were taught to not have any care for themselves if they were hurting, if they died. They were taught to not desire children or marriage. They were taught that if they were aggressive as women, they might as well be warriors for the men to protect the king, that they could take all of that aggressive, negative energy that their husbands and their, their fathers did not want to be bothered with, and they could use that to protect and fight. Now, this is real history. I am not making this up, and I am not trying to start a gender war. Uh, you guys know I'm not with that stuff. This is just actually the actual history of these people. This is the real historical story. Now, Hollywood can try to spin it into something that it's not, but I want to be really clear on what happened, what the Dahomey people were. These were traitors who ultimately sold so many of their men, they had no choice. Now, we haven't gotten there yet, so don't let me get ahead of myself. Anyway, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but... These are the warriors. So this is actually a man right here. 
And then this, these are men and female warriors. So you have the two female warriors on this side and you have um, a male warrior in the middle. And this little guy down here, who's looking a little bit fruity, it, that's laying on the ground, he's another male warrior. This is a more modern day. So these were their original style. And as time passed, they started to look like this. You notice that they have guns in this one. So this is an older photograph. He's holding um, a sword and not a knife, but something very similar to a knife. And you can see um, as time went on, their clothing changed and they started to carry guns, okay? I wanna be clear that this is a man and this is a man, the women are here. The women wore a very similar uniform but they would have their breasts covered and they would wear waist beads and they would wear skirts. So what is interesting is that when the European would encounter these warriors, they would fetishize them. Um, Jean Bayol, he, I, the Smithsonian has an account of him describing in kind of lustful terms, if you read it all, his encounter with one of these female warriors of the Dahoney. He says that she walked jauntily up, swung her sword three times with both hands, and then calmly cut the last flesh that attached the head to the trunk. She then squeezed the blood of her weapon off her weapon and she swallowed it. So even the European at the time was fetishizing this idea of the masculine black female warrior. But remember, this is the masculine black female warrior that is protecting the king under the control of men. She made up a small regiment of the Dahomey, in the beginning, a small regiment of the Dahomey warrior class that was specifically built to protect the king. These are women who were often turned over into warriorship by their fathers, by their husbands, because they were considered aggressive. And rather than deal with an aggressive woman, they turned her into a warrior. And, you know, there's a lot of Black women today, let's just be honest, who are buying this hook, line, and sinker. And there's a whole section of Black men who consider themselves pro-Black who actually use these women as an example of a female warrior class as if these women are a good example of female warriorship. Remember, the Dahomey people, the men were traitors. The kingdom got its start. If you were not here for the beginning of this live, the kingdom got its start by lying to another African kingdom, saying they were going to help them. And instead of helping them, conquering them, taking their land and moving their capital onto the next black kingdom's land. Then they proceeded to sell slaves. They would go from kingdom to kingdom, conquer the kingdoms, and then sell off their people into slavery to the European. These same traitorous people then started an army, a regiment of their army, meaning a small part of their army, with women who were considered to be angry and aggressive, forbade those women to have children, forbade those women to marry, taught those women to only care about survival, to not care about being in pain, and to not care about living. And again, Hollywood can try to make a movie, right? Hollywood can try to make a movie to make this sound like it's something that it wasn't, but the Dahomey people until they were conquered, kept selling slaves. They were not fighting the European to stop slavery. They were major players in the transatlantic slave trade, helping sell slaves. Half of the wars they fought at the end of their kingdom were to stop people from stopping them selling slaves. They were fighting other African, let, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Let me follow my, I'm going to get there. 
But when I say that, I don't know what kind of movie Hollywood is making, but these Dahomey people and the so-called female warriors that they utilized are not anybody that we should be looking up to. The only thing we can do is look at this history and shake our head no. So according to the Europeans, in the early 19th centuries, there were between 1,000 and 6,000 Amazons, Amazons being the Dahomey warrior women. They made up about one third of the Dahomey army. The women's branch of the army consi uh, consisted of huntresses, rifle women, reapers, archers, and gunners. Okay. Now, in around 1825, because remember, they're selling slaves this whole time. All right. They're just selling slaves. <laughs> in about 1825, there was a city called Abakuta, and it became a safe haven for Black people in Africa who were trying to hide from the Dahomey slave raids because these people would raid villages and raid cities and steal their own people, not their own tribes people, but their own, their own countrymen from their continent. And they would sell them to the European. So um, Abakutu became a safe haven where if you were trying to hide from the Dahomey people, you could go hide there so that you wouldn't get sold into slavery. So the Dahomey went to war. They went to war with Abakuta because they did not want them protecting people from their slave raids. It was cutting into their money. This is in 1825. Now, they did not win the war. They lost the war. And let us be clear that the Amazons, these, these female warriors, these Dahoney female warriors, they fought in that war against Abakuta and they were fighting them on behalf of the Dahomey people because they were upset that Abakuta was protecting people from Dahomey slave raids. The Dahomey got into a war, I really wanna make this clear. Those warrior women at the command of their king got into a war with other Africans who were trying to protect Africans from them and their desire to steal them and sell them into slavery. So for Hollywood to make a movie where, you know, um, what's her name? What was the actress in the, in the movie? For Hollywood to make a movie where, whatever her name is, I can't think of her name right now. Maybe one of you guys remembers her name. I can't remember it. But for Hollywood to make a movie where this woman is looking out at European slave ships talking about they want to take all of Africa. It's like, it's like they want to take all of Africa. They want to take all of Africa. You guys were helping them sell all of Africa. You guys were selling them the humans. I don't know why Sony would make a movie trying to portray the Dahomey people. I mean, we know that Benin apologized for this history. So why is Hollywood making a movie trying to portray the Dahomey female warriors or the Dahomey people as friends of other Africans when their entire nation was built on taking over other African, uh, other African nations, selling their people into slavery? And that includes the so-called female warrior class. So between 1840 and 1850, the British wanted to end American slavery. They did not want to compete with America who was getting all these free bodies, right? America was stealing all these free laborers from Africa or purchasing all these free laborers from Africa. And so the British, they were like, look, we're, you know what, we're going to be anti-slavery, not because they cared about black people, but because they could not compete 
with all of that free labor that America had. So because the Dahomey people were such big players in the slave trade, the British sent a delegation, all right? They sent an entire diplomatic party over to the Dahomey people to talk to King Gizo and try to convince him to stop selling African slaves to Europeans. They were like, hey, King Gizo, can you stop selling Africans? <laughs> Even though, I mean, just think about the absurdity of this. Gizo basically said no. He's like, no, we're going to keep selling people. Stay out of our business. You mind your business, we'll mind ours. Now, Gizo was the last of the, th the la one of the last three kings of the Dahomey people. So I want to make sure that I covered everything. Yeah. So let's go last but not least, okay? By the time that the final Dahomey king, and this is his picture right here, by the time he came into power, the Dahomey people had sold so many black men that most of their army was women. Why was their army mostly women? Because there were no men left. They had sold so many men. They had sold so many men that there were very few men around. He tried to give his army guns because the French had started to attempt to fight them for control of the territory. And I think that this is so bittersweet because you have the Dahomey people stealing land from other black people, kidnapping people, selling them into slavery. You have them literally fighting wars with other African nations because they're upset with them that they won't let them or they're protecting potential slaves and not letting them sell them. Right. So they're literally at war with other Africans. This is how desirous they were of the money from the slave trade. That in the final 23 battles against the French. The female troops had to be the vanguard. These female Dahoney warriors had to be the vanguards of the king's forces and the female troops were the last ones to surrender. I don't know if this is something that we really want to brag on. Do we want to brag on a nation that raped and pillaged its own continent, sold its own people to the Europeans into slavery, forced its women to be part of an army, sold off so many of its men that by the time the country fell, most of their troops were women. And the women didn't win, mind you right? They did not win. The French invaded and conquered Dahomey. And in 1946, they became a territory of France, which you know what is what they deserve because they were selling black people to Europeans and then the Europeans took them over. You see how that happens? You think they're your friends and then they take you over. What is it? Okay. So this is the true history of the Dahomey people. This is the true history of the Dahomey warrior women. I don't know why Viola Davis would play in a movie that actually, literally, completely, and totally lies about the history of those female warriors and about the history of the Dahomey people. The Dahomey people absolutely never ever fought against slavery. These people helped, helped support the slave trade. Benin has apologized. They gave some weak apology, y'all. Benin gave some really weak whack apology 
about their role in the safe trade, but make no mistake, when we say Dahomey, we're talking about Benin. We're talking about parts of Togo. We're talking about parts of Nigeria. Those were all Dahomey territory. Those were all places where they were purposely selling slaves, purposely fighting against other Africans, purposely conquering other Africans to sell slave bodies. And this so-called female warrior class ended up being the last ditch effort of a weak and traitorous kingdom and if we learn anything from this, we learn that the type of kingdom that puts women on the front lines is a traitorous, weak kingdom, such as the Dahomey. That is the only thing we can take from this story, this little page in history. How we got to America 101 and why we cannot use Hollywood movies as a barometer for Black history. Now, where are they now? Today, the so-called Amazons are those Dahomey female warriors. Their role is purely ceremonial. The woman that is sitting here on the bed is actually the queen of the Dahomey warriors. This is one of her aides that's holding this umbrella over her head. And I want you to look at the room that she is sitting in. Let me blow this up. I want us to take a good look at this. Can you see this? Because I'm about to end this live. But I want you to take a look. She is proud to be a descendant of the Dahomey female warrior class. She is proud to be a descendant of women who were so brainwashed that they fought for a kingdom that sold African people into slavery. She is coveting her position as a descendant of a female warrior class that kept fighting even after their own king repeatedly sold so many men into slavery that eventually they did not have enough men for their kingdom to stand. A defeated class of people who were conquered by the French, the very Europeans, that they made deals with to overthrow other nations, the very Europeans that they sold so many black bodies to, ultimately conquered them. That is some food for thought. That is some food for thought. The Dahomey warrior women nor the Dahomey people, neither of them are a good example of Black leadership, Black nationhood, Black pushback against so-called white supremacy. You guys know I don't even believe in white supremacy. But what we can learn from the Dahomey is it never pays, pays to be a traitor. It never pays to sell out your own people. The day that you would fight other Africans for your right to keep selling slaves over actually fighting Europeans from taking slaves, that was the day that they sealed their grave. But why don't we leave this live with another play of the way that Hollywood is trying to spin this story. I just want us to watch the trailer one more time. I want us to watch the trailer again with the understanding and the knowledge of the real history of these people and how Hollywood is trying to use the story of traitors to push this image of black female warriorship, to push this masculinization of black women, to push a radical feminist agenda and how we should not be moved by this. Let me play it. An evil is coming that threatens our kingdom. 
our freedom. But we have a weapon. They are not prepared for. My king, the Europeans wish to conquer us. They will not stop until the whole of Africa is theirs. We must fight back for our people. Time is come. You are asking me to take them to war. Oh. Some things are worth fighting for. Don't know. to join the king's guard. No kingdom in all of Africa shares this privilege. Train hard, fight harder. We fear no one. And we fear no pain. I offer you a choice. Fight or we die. If you are worried, you must kill your tears. We are the spare of victory. We are the blade of freedom. We are the home. Don't know. I just want to say that given the history of the Dahomey people, how they were traitors, how they conquered other African nations, how they sold people into slavery, how the women who were thought to be aggressive were forced into these positions of warriorship when they're husbands and their fathers did not want to be bothered with them. When we consider that these women were so brainwashed and that nation was so weak that they were actually in wars with other African nations who were trying to protect Africans from them, selling them into slavery. When we think that 400 and some odd women walked into a war with the French and 17 of them lived, all to support a nation of traitors. Absolutely Hollywood's portrayal of the Dahomey people and their female warriors is worse than a lie. It is upholding some of the most traitorous Africans on the continent. And again, Benin has apologized for the actions of their people. So we know that the real history is that the Dahomey didn't care about Europeans coming to Africa and conquering Africa. They helped. They used Europeans to conquer each other. Remember, one of their kings made a deal with a Brazilian slave trader to have, help him overthrow his brother so that he could step into power. This is who the Dahomey were. They were not loyal to each other. They were not loyal to other Africans. And their female warrior class is indicative of a society that is sick and twisted. That is my opinion on the trailer of this movie and on the actual history of the Dahomey people and of the Dahomey female warriors. Feel free to agree or disagree in the chat and let me know. And again, those of you who requested videos from me that I said I would go ahead and I would make the video, I am making the videos, I'm just so busy 
with this cultural festival, you guys, that it's really difficult for me to do. Oh, but before I go, um, I'm going to show you guys something. Um, hold on. Oh, you know what? I better show up privately. I have some artwork in my house. I wonder if I can show you guys. Oh, hold on. Maybe I can turn on my camera. One sec. Let me try. I'm going to show you guys what I'm up to these days. Can I turn my camera on? <gasps> Can you guys see this? I have to back up for you guys to really appreciate it. See that big picture? That is one picture. Hold on. And you see, this is my, this is my uh, china cabinet. So you can see how big that picture is. Let me show you another one. Hold on. This is another one. I'm trying to get far away because they're so big. I want you guys to see them. This is another one. I have a few, but I'm only gonna show you guys the ones that are in my dining room. So I don't have to take you all over my house. I'm trying to show you this one too, hold on. Can I do it? Oh, ah. this is another one. They're massive. Anyway, you guys, I'm very busy with this festival that I'm working on. And th those pieces are, some of the pieces that one of the artists brought over. Um, so that is why my videos are very sparse. I apologize to my patrons and members too, but um, it'll be worth it. And I will be vlogging about it, even though I just have to edit vlogs for my vlog channel, but I am vlogging everything. So when I do finally get the time to edit my vlogs, um, it should be pretty awesome. You guys should enjoy it. So with that said, I am going to, uh, get, um, I'm going to get out of here and I will talk to you guys later. All right.